Ah, to comment or not to comment? That is the question. Oh, hello. Didn't see you all there. Hi, chat. How you been? Uh, nothing going on here. Don't worry about it. No shallow graves in front of us or anything like that. No, 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 sir. Oh, no, sir. Nothing at all of the nature. Uh, officer, no, I promise this uh, large mound of earth was here when I got you. Oh, the monolith? No, that's part of the aesthetic. Hi. <laughs> Hi chat, welcome back to Station Ears, the rumor of the series' demise have been greatly exaggerated. Um, I was very, very sick last week, and the week before I completely lost my voice, um, yes, and I wasn't really able to record it or anything. If you'd like to get updates about that sort of thing in future, please consider joining the Discord server, link in the description, as well as checking out the community page, or ringing that notification bell next to the subscription button. Uh, ouchie! All of which will prevent you depressurizing your suit on Europa. That's right, it's a guarantee. Um, if you happen to end up on Europa and depressurize your suit, feel free to read message us in writing and uh, we'll get back to you in 6 to 12 business days. Hello everybody, and welcome back to Coal Mining Simulator 2023. That's right, we're going for a little bit more power production today. Uh, the juice is running a little low on base. Um, I took a few weeks off uh, Stationeer's recording, or maybe a week. I'm actually not sure exactly how long it's been since the last episode, because I got laryngitis. Uh, my voice is still a little bit raspy, but I'd like to assure you all that the rumors of the series' death, both uh, on and off screen, have been greatly exaggerated. My character's not dead, and neither am I. Surprisingly, admittedly, but, you know, still true. Now, I'm digging up coal here because we are very low on power. Um, the power to f run our base, and also the power to discuss the comment section on the last two videos, because, oh boy, the backseating was a little bit insane. Now, I have absolutely no problem with suggestions. Thank you so much for them. It's the condescension that gets to me a little bit, and the, the, the hate speech, like the racial slur. Dude, listen, guys, okay, I need you to chill. I had to delete so many, um, colorful comments this time round. It, it's, uh, I need you to not be like that, please. This game is meant to be, you know, fairly chill. Let's try and chill out a little bit. All right, but moving forward, there were actually some really useful comments uh, that came through. The biggest one being I, that I should be using the furnace to heat the base uh, from the get-go, and you're right. Uh, that's a lesson I've learned. Uh, trying to do it with power works on Mars. It's uh, it's just not it's it's too inefficient for Europa. Um, I now understand this. Next time I do a playthrough on this planet, I will definitely be using the furnace from the get-go. Um, point number the second is that running rushing for the tools as early as I did was probably unnecessary, and I should have focused on hydroponics beforehand. I tend to agree. I really underestimated how much the stationary difficulty would change the food consumption. It is significantly faster than I've ever experienced before, and so I really wasn't prepared for how quickly we're going to run out of food. In fact, I don't. I'll be honest. I don't think we're going to make it through today either. Uh, without dying again, and I don't understand how the new hydroponic system works. I've been told that there is a new cartridge we need to check out, but I don't understand how to... And people said that plants now need to sleep, that's fine, but I've never written logic, uh, or sort of wired up, I guess, logic, to turn lights on and off on a schedule. I don't even know how you'd make a timer. You have like a memory unit that's set to zero, and then you have a maths unit that like counts up from that number, and then you write the memory, and then when it reaches to a certain threshold, then you check the value, and then that turns it off, and then how many ticks do you... Like, I don't know. Um, the other thing was, can we set up the weather station? Yes, sir, I'll do that today. That'll be part of today's plan. Sorry, I'm going through a list here next to me. Uh, next up on the agenda was... Can you... What does it say? I can't even read my own handwriting. Ah, yes. Um, why are you... Oh, let's do it over here, from the roof. It'll be easy to see. Uh, two questions. Number one, why don't you insulate your tanks the same way that you've insulated the batteries? Short answer is, um, I was trying to equalize the room temperature with the battery temperature as a sort of like a thermal battery for this room. The room would get warm, and then this would keep it warm because all this gas pressure would be the same temperature. This was a little ambitious, uh, especially for a room of this size, and it's taken too long. So, and we're using these wall heaters, which I've turned off, and they are very inefficient. So that was a mistake. I should have sealed this off from the get-go, vacuumed it out, and insulated these tanks. You know, brought in nice warm gas from the furnace and then kept it warm by vacuuming them out, but that's okay. I've, uh, lesson learned. We'll do that next time. Uh, second thing, why don't you run a long line through the back of all your filters rather than doing the sort of daisy chain snake thing? Uh, the risk with the daisy chain snake thing is that if these filters run out, pressure will build up behind it and eventually explode. Now, normally, if you are constantly pulling in gas, that is dangerous. I'm not. I'm, currently, there is absolutely nothing in this pipe. 
uh, as you can see, there are 0.2 pascals of pressure, and that's just because it's attached to the furnace, I think. Uh, no, actually, I lied. Sorry, that's because it's... <laughs> there's, like, straight up nothing in here. There we go. It was attached to the furnace, and it's just been vacuumed out. There is nothing putting pressure into this pipe that could build up to explode. And also, having one long parallel one does tend to bug out on me sometimes. The game is still in beta, and so I end up venting a lot of gases I actually want to keep. This is less stable, but oh, sorry, it's um, it's less automated doing it this way, but it's significantly more stable. All you got to do is just check the filters every now and then, uh, which I'm willing to do. Uh, crazy, I know. All right, let's do a quick smelt of this copper since we're right here. Uh, I'll do like, you know what, actually I'm going to do quite a bit because I want to get a whole bunch of warm CO2 for us to use. We'll do like a 10 to 5 kind of thing. Uh, other people did mention that there are more efficient ways to do the smelts. you got to do a 2 to 1 ratio, volatiles to oxides, I know, thank you very much. I know what uh, water molecules look like, it's H2O guys, it's it's not rocket science, uh, despite the channel, or rather despite the game name. Um, but I, I, uh, I have intentionally not been doing that because it straight up just doesn't matter unless you're tweaking... Um, alloy variables. It's You don't need to be that precise, and it's an infinite resource. And we play games for fun, not efficiency on this channel, which if you're new here, you might not know, but if you've been around the block, you'll be familiar with. Okay, next up. Um, comments, comments, comments. What else is on the list? Next up. Ah, yes, people told me, and this is an absolutely brilliant suggestion, we'd rather use uh, pressure regulators than valves um, to fill up our gas tanks, and this is a very, very good idea. Uh, valves will eventually overpressurize and explode, and then gas tanks like this one uh, over here they can only they can only withstand 10 megapascals of pressure. Um, so putting anything more on them will make a big old boom on your back, and that's not great. So we're going to swap that out right now. This is a very good idea. Thank you for the suggestion. Uh, we need two of these: one for oxygen, one for nitrogen. I don't think we're putting any other. I don't think we're putting anything else in canisters just yet. We will eventually want to put fuel in. But for now, we're doing fine. Okay, let's also swap that. How are we doing for power? Oh, we got a few lights. That's good. And I'm going to heat up the tanks in here using the furnace from now on. Uh, at your suggestion. It's a, it's a very good one. Let's turn that on. We won't pump it out just yet. That can just equalize with the room temperature. Alright, you can get put away. And then we're going to take these off. All right, and I think that's all of the major suggestions. Thank you so much for um, all of your feedback over the past few episodes. Atmospherics is always a, ah, whoopsie, is always a little bit contentious in the Stationers community. People get um, very intense when it comes to designing things the way they want them designed. This is a computer game, friends. Uh, Y'all need to chill a little bit. <laughs> it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to work. Um, I do need a lot of. I do need to put out a call for help here, though. The two new systems in the game are trading and uh, at hydroponics. I do not know how to work the new trading or hydroponic systems. So if anyone could please give me their best build for how they do hydroponics and their best build for how they do trading, I would uh, love to make my own approximation of that. Thank you very much. All right, so let's wire in these. I'm going to go down first here, I think. Yes, just like that. And then we'll need the cutters. Okay, perfect. There we go. I think I need to set up a little screen with like a to-do list. Is that a thing you can do? It's a thing you can do in Space Engineers. I don't know if you can do it in Station Years though. Not without like miles and miles of logic. We could do signs, I guess, like a checklist. And maybe that's a good idea because I'm, I'm sort of getting overwhelmed now with the number of moving parts in the space. Uh, let's top up this battery. There we go. Let's do a quick filter check to appease everybody. 87%, 100%, uh, not 100%. 89 percent 97 100 yeah i think we're fine guys 94 98 oh no 98 82 yep on other planets like venus or something where you're constantly pulling in atmosphere i can understand the need to do it that way but on this one it's not important okay so we know our tanks can withstand 10 megapascals of pressure so let's put nine nine thousand kilopascals or nine megapascals and we should see the pressure in here steadily increase yes indeed and that one's going to rise until it hits 9. Let's see if it does that. This, this should be how it works, if I understand correctly. I've never done this. This is a very, very good idea. Yep, there we go. So thank you to the uh, the person who suggested that. It's it's absolutely genius. Uh, let's open our canister. A little bit cold, but we'll live. Air tank critical. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then let's top up our jetpack jet as well. Perfect. Perfect. And then let's vacuum out the waste tank. Nice. Uh, what temperature is that gas, actually? It is... 10C. Okay, 10C is a pretty respectable amount of uh, temperature for this. Uh, let's just completely vacuum that out. Oh, it doesn't have to be complete. I mean, it's just a waste tank. Who cares, right? Okay, lovely. And uh, we'll close that to stop the warning noise. It's very annoying. Oh, I suppose we can drink quickly. Uh, then, we need to worry about food. Let's go ahead and have a look at our plants. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to want to get the new uh, plant cartridge for uh, for this thing. Which apparently will let us see plant details. I've been told it's made in the electronics printer. So let's go investigate. We're now reaching the point in the game where they've changed the fundamental systems. to stuff I don't know. This is going to be uh, a learning thing for all of us. Hunger, Iron, gold, copper, huh? Uh, no, sorry, I don't need that. I need this. Copper, gold, iron. Oh, there's a pipe in here. Uh, we don't need that there. There we go. Okay, cook uh, this up. Thank you greatly. This episode might be a little bit shorter than the others. I'm still getting back into the swing of uh, content creation. And uh, very specifically this game, which is a little bit intense at times. Um, oh, there we go. Plant analyzer. Look at that. Okay, let's let's try this thing out. So, well, let's put a new battery in while we're here. Certainly doesn't hurt. I do love having this battery charger in here. It's uh, We are still losing power because it's so cold in the other room, but very slowly at this point. Technically, it's not the best thing to have, but it's 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 fine. It's fine. Okay, I actually kind of want to put one in here as well. Just have one in each airlock, you know? An absolute mad lad. Okay, take me into the hydroponics. And it looks like those plants have died. Uh, I turned off the lights in here at uh, panel at the members' requests. They did say that... Oh, here we go. That the plants need darkness. Okay, so growth efficiency is 100%. That's great. Uh, ideal temperature 20, current temperature 20. That's not great. We need to up the temperature in here. Light and efficiency 98%. Light intensity 0. Light received 17. Darkness received 146. Light stress 2. And then just the ratio of gas they can accept. We need 100% CO2. We have 90. I guess that's not too big on the calculation. Okay, we have received a lot of darkness across our plants. Oh, and they all accept light and darkness at different rates. Okay, so if I turn this on... Are you going to start receiving light now? Yes, you are. And does that lower the darkness? Let's see. Come on. Give it to me. Come on. Come on. <laughs> yeah, it does. Okay, that's very interesting. That's very interesting. Uh, let's put this cartridge... Uh, we'll put it on the radiator for safekeeping. Uh, we probably need to get some more hydroponics bays, don't we? But I don't want to invest in hydroponics until I know, like, is this station worth using? Should I just be using these things with the, the grow lights? How do we do... How does one hydroponics? How do you set up a timer so you know when to turn them on and off? How do you pull this data out of here? Because I did a little bit of testing. Just the tiniest little bit of testing. And I can't find a way to read, like, the darkness and light values off of those plants. So if anyone knows, uh, now's the time to teach. Because your boy has no goddamn clue. Alright, we're just going to have to babysit that, I guess. And ideally grow the same plant again and again, I suppose? Yeah, so that way you don't have to worry about different light levels? Yeah, that makes sense to me. Okay. Uh, but we'll get to that in a second. They also have very different grow times, by the look of it. Alright, uh, that can get turned off. We can pump that out. And that is draining. Excellent. Okay, next up, I want to set up the weather station. Uh, that's why I was mining up that copper. We're going to need a lot more copper coil, and we're going to need to print out some logic circuits. Yay! It's time for logic. My best friend. Woohoo! Also, by the way, sorry if you can hear some fan noise in the background of this video. Uh, the inverter is currently recharging because we're on stage 6 load shedding, which means... Uh, give or take 14 hours a day of no electricity. It's a real, real fun time. Not gonna lie to you. Uh, and please, for, for God's sake, all the Americans, just stop telling me to buy a portable generator or a solar panel. Like, I know I'm African, but I promise you we're all very educated down here too. 
I understand that basic methodology of portable power production, but I cannot use them. That's why I have it. <laughs> I don't know why it irks me so much, but it drives me crazy, man. Oh my god, it's that specifically. It's like, hey, uh, Large and Employed, have you thought of buying a, uh, a battery and a portable solar panel? And I'm like, my dude, you play Station Ears, but you can't work out that 120 watt portable panel, which has like a price point of $200 per watt, is not going to run my 500 watt PC. I mean, you didn't have that information. But like, how many, how many do you think? Okay, anyway, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Um, let's go into, also I'm not, I can't have panels or generators in my complex, the security complex I live in. Um, it's not allowed by the body corporate, rather frustratingly. They don't need to come around on that, don't they? What am I doing here? Um, uh, yes, uh, logic. Yes, the thing that they don't have. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it's great when you guys can't punch back. All right, let's make the... Um, we're going to need a logic writer and a logic reader in order to pull data from the weather station and put it onto an LCD or LED, I guess. And then we're going to need a monitor. Uh, it might be under console. It's console. And I'm going to need two of these uh, because I want to make the long monitor, which requires two consoles. It's like it's kind of like when you put down the lockers, you got to use two kits. So I can show you. Uh, so there you go. So the small one just takes one. The big one takes two. Uh, it actually takes three. Uh, but I think we only need two. Yeah, I don't need to display that many decimal points. And then we just need cable. So what's going to happen, basically, is we're going to put the weather station down and wire it up. But it's not going to work yet. Uh, it only actually starts doing anything once the... Um, it only starts doing anything once the actual storm warning, like, has begun. I think you get, like, I think it's eight minutes before a storm it might be 10 i'm not sure what it is in this version of the game but you get like you get a few minutes before the storm comes so until it actually does that nothing happens uh we can also set up some klaxons to uh give us an audible like an auditory warning when when it's time for the uh for the storm to arrive and that should help us get inside um so we'll print out a few of those i'm just going to get two stacks of cable oh and there's our critical hundo hunger warning um that's not going to be great that's going to be a little scary. Okay, I'm going to need some more logic so that we can wire up these speakers as well. And then we're going to want to print out a klaxon. Oh, you do you do it here? Is it speaker now? It's speaker now. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead. Oh, we actually are pretty low on gold. In fact, we're out. And we also need more electro. I want to build an ogre, uh, which is just like a mining drill thing, just for fun. Uh, just to kind of showcase some of the stuff the game has got for, like, auto mining. Um, but in order to do that, we're going to need... Yeah, we're going to need more Electrum. We need 25 and we have 23. We're also going to need like a 50 for a vending machine, I think, or something insane like that. A little bit crazy how much the game expects you to have access to at this point, but oh well. Okay, I think this clone's going to die. Um, unless we can get a potato in time. It's possible. Let's go ahead over and see what our hydroponics are looking like. Maybe the plants need a bit of love. Oh, I need to get the weather station too. Okay. Oh my god, I nearly killed myself with that. Uh, let's go back down, cancel depressurize. I actually kind of want to dump some of that cold air into this room. Put the pressure up in here a bit. Uh, I want to take my weather station. There it is. Take that with us. Okay, let's go and check out everything over here. And I'm going to swap some tool batteries in the meantime. And you know what? Let's take a full battery for this APC and we can just let the other one charge up over there. All right. Let's go and see in here how the potatoes are doing. They look like they're doing pretty well. It's like through the roof of that hydroponics bay. Let's see how we're doing here. Uh, we do indeed get a potato, uh, but if we wait a little bit longer, we'll get a seed. I think we should do that. I think we should do that. Because once we have the seed, then we can place that in here. We can still use this with the grow light. We've just got to be... We've got to watch it more carefully than we've been doing. That's all. Um, let's have a quick look at how our plants are doing. So we're going to want to do... <laughs> so stupid. We're going to want to do that. Uh, put that back on the radiator. Okay, light stress is at 2% still. That's excellent. You've received too much light. You've received too much light. You've received too much light. But you also received too much darkness somehow. I don't know how you can have both too much light and too much darkness. The game is made by madmen. Um, rice is at 63, potato at 65, you're at 93% light, 
and you're at 101% light. Okay, cool. So we can let them, but we'll leave them on for the rest of the day. And then, well, I suppose they'll still be getting light with the European sun. Yeah, yeah, and that should stop them over overcharging and they can get some some sleepy time. So they do they just need to be turned off once a day? Is that how is that how it works? How do we analyze this? Someone told me I can use something called a sample analyzer to uh, check the genetic makeup of the plants. Yes, I'm not even exaggerating. This is to grow a potato. Uh, I'm currently growing one in my backyard because I dropped it there and it's kind of just doing its own thing. But who am I to uh, doubt the developers of this uh, of this wonderful game? Um, let's go ahead and switch over this way. Like, this is in Farming Simulator, you know? I mean, although, at this point, right? Okay, uh, in order to get the weather station, enough complaining, let's get engineering. We're gonna want this thing over here. So it's got a light on top. The light is very interesting because the light, it gives you a visual indicator in the same way that the timer gives you a sort of uh, numerical indicator of when the storm is coming. I think we need, I think we need like iron sheets or something to finish this thing. Uh, plastic sheets. Okay, I'll have to go get some. But we can wire it up in the meantime. We know this is going to go through there and we know we're going to take, we're going to cut it in this. This is going to be our data port. Uh, you know what? I actually want this thing on its own APC. And it would be handy to have an APC in here. Yeah, so let's do it that way. That's how I was planning on it anyway. Let's get an APC in here. We'll take power. How are we going to do this? We'll take power from that. Ah, it's not the end of the world. It's about to, yeah, sure we'll lose a bit of juice, but it's okay. I kind of just don't want to do it on this wall because we don't want to run cable there. We want we do want to do it on this wall. We'll get the power in the top of the airlock and it can come out the bottom. And then that's just going to go out the side. It's not going to connect up with this network at all. So we're going to run that down and that's going to go out. So then the airlock has its own power and this system has its own power as well. I think that that is the way we want to do this. And this pipe being here, you're going to be a problem. I think you might be. I'm going to have to like snake the cable around the side here. It's going to look horrendous. Oh god, it really does, doesn't it? Um, oh, there's got to be a better way to do this. Oh, if I flip it around, I can just stick power on the other side. We can power the weather station um, from the base. As long as the data port is separate, it doesn't matter. Yeah, that works for me. So put power that way. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, this is the solution. And then we splice in the power on this side, because this is connected to the ice crusher network. And then the data can come on this side so that it's isolated. Okay, I'm happy with that. Then we just need to get uh, power in the top here, which we're going to need heavy cable for. I didn't bring it. Whoopsie. Um, let's pop this open. Uh, this also gives us another, another uh, large battery available to us uh, should we need it. And that should ideally be exposed to space. I mean, it's going to lose power, but that's okay. And uh, this means that, you know, in an emergency, we can go grab it. Okay, cool. So we've got this. Uh, we'll do the logic somewhere else. Where are we going to put the readout? The readout should be in the base. And the logic speakers can be... I've only got klaxon speakers as an option. It would be fun to put them on that tower, but I think the cabling is going to be a bit of a pain. So instead... We could stick one here. I'd like to put a solar panel there at some point. Uh, we could just stick one on the wall here, to be honest. Right there sounds good. And the other one will go... I don't even know. What if we stick it like... Uh... Will this fit? Yeah, this will fit. I might want to expand that at some point, though. Hmm, leave me this with me. Let me find another good spot for this uh, other speaker. Well, if we move this light up, we can stick it over here. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Because if we move the light up, then the... Uh... Oh, let me put that away. If we move the light up, then we don't have to overlap cables, which is going to be a lot easier. Yeah, just put the light, like, over here. And then what we're going to do is move this. Hold on, it's all coming together. Yeah, and we are slowly, unfortunately, starving here. Um, I just don't know how to make the hydroponics. Well, I, I sort of know now. I have an idea of how to make them more efficient. I don't know how to automate that efficiency just yet. And I really don't want to have to watch a, you know, 40-minute Cows Are Evil tutorial in order to work it out. So I'd love to just ask my community. Uh, I'm not a professional sta station years player. This is the second ever series I've done on it. So I'd love to hear your ideas about how you go about these kind of challenges. 
Um, this is the part of the game that can, I think, is what puts people off. Is because it gets a little bit obscure. Alright, let's wire in the klaxon. And then we'll sort out the logic. I just want to get all the wiring done first. Okay, let's go uh, weld up the weather station so that it actually functions. Uh, get some heavy cables so that we can connect to the power to the APC and run all this stuff. And then, I think we're in a great place. Okay, weather station completed. That's awesome. Now, we're just going to have to splice in the cables over here. I can just pop those in from the top. In fact, actually, I'm going to go up a level so that it links up with this top line of very ugly cabling, which is currently powering our uh, gas. Oh, what's it all called? Uh, the greenhouse and the... I think it's the heater wall as well. Let's just wire this in. Sorry, like, when you try and concentrate in this game, I can't talk and, and think at the same time. I very damn am. Okay, that's done. Why am I missing a tool? Oh, it's in my hand. Okay, yeah, very dumb. All right, next up, let's put down some logic. So, logic in this game works in two, uh, sort of three stages. You have to read information, you have to produce information, read information, and then write that information to an output, right? So in order to read information, we used, you guessed it, a logic reader. In order to write information, you guessed it, we're going to use a logic writer. So let's put down both of those. We want logic writer. And in order to write information to multiple things, like these klaxons, we're going to use something called a batch writer. Batch writer. So one writer will write logic to, will write outputs to one thing. A, um, a batch writer will write logic to everything of that type on the same network. You can only do one type of thing per batch writer. Alright, and all you do is can make sure you connect up both data ports. One will be input, one will be output, one will be power. You gotta make sure that all your ports are connected. Uh, I think in the case of processing units, it's four ports instead of three. And in fact, if we just turn these two around, we save a bit of cabling. Yeah, because then we can just face the power down. Uh, there is like a little mini game, I guess, in Stationeers in the community, which is to try and see how, in, like, how efficiently you can place circuits. You know, how little cable you could use to do the same task. Logic Writer. And then we're just going to splice these in. And I think I might actually have just enough cable. Oh, sweet miracle. I think I do. Yep. And I think turning it around is what saved the day here. Otherwise, I would have needed another six each, which would have been just too much. Oh, no. Would have been right on. The oh, no, no. No, it would have been too much because this is the this is the connector here. Okay, cool. So, uh, never turn your logic on until you've set your parameters. So, logic reader... Your input is going to be the weather station. Our variable we want to read, it's the thing that's on the left there, but now left mouse, the text in green, that's what you're currently looking at. We're going to read the next weather event time, that'll be in seconds, a number value. We turn that on. So right now, the next weather event time equals zero, because at the moment there is no storm incoming, this thing is not panicking. Uh, once we turn it on, yep, we can see for sure the light's green. That means there's no storm coming. Uh, it'll turn yellow when the timer starts, and it'll turn red when the storm's happening. Although there are other visual indicators as to when that is the case. Uh, logic writer, right? Our input is going to be our... Oh, sorry. Uh, hold C to go back. Our logic reader, this one here. Uh, we can name these, I guess, to make this a bit simpler. So then we'll call this... We'll call this weather logic reader. This will be... Weather, weather, logic writer, and this will be our weather batch writer. Okay. Uh, now I actually can't do the output for this yet because this is going to go to the screen. So what we can do in the meantime is do the klaxons. So our input's going to be the weather logic reader. So right now it's going to be reading zero because there's currently zero. Our output a variable, our output type is going to be to the klaxon, these ones here. It'll read up to both of them because they're on the same network. And the variable is going to be on. Just turn it on. Okay, as for the volume, volume's at 100%. Excellent. Uh, I wonder which sound we've got on. Ah, that'd be interesting to see. Uh, but we can turn that on now. So right now, the state is zero. Once this thing reads a um, a number, 
it will write the state to this, basically. All right, and then we need to set up the screen. Uh, in order to do that, we're going to have to head inside, get some more cables, and wire it all in. Uh, where do I want to connect this? I'm going to want the screen... Uh, see, now this is the... <laughs> I've kind of shot myself in the foot a bit with the way I've run this wiring. Um, where do we want the screen? There's no good spot in here. I guess we could just put it somewhere we can see from the outside. Like, could we see it from here, do you think? Worth a shot, right? I reckon if we move the ice crusher, we could probably see the sign. So we'll just turn that on. And this saves us a few extra trips here as well. Uh, we're going to wire this in right over here. Voila. It's currently reading zero, as it will, because currently there's no data being fed to it. So again, we're going to grab our screwdriver. Our input variable is going to be the logic reader, currently reading zero. Our output is going to be to the LS ooh, LCD display medium. And our output variable is going to be the setting number. And that will set the, the value on there as the time happens. But right now, there is currently nothing running. Right, the weather station's functional, but there's no storm incoming, so we can't see anything. Okay. Uh... Uh, one more thing I do want to do, though, just in case we put something else on this network. This is going to be our weather play. And we can, of course, we can add multiple of these, but then we'll need to use a batch writer. Um, because right now, this rate writer is is sending data to this one specifically. The batch writer is sending data to all speakers around us. Okay. I think... I think we're happy. I think we're happy. We might, we might, mm, we might need another logic reader just for this one. Uh, to tell it, because we, we might need a 1 or a 0 state to turn the speakers on or off. I don't know if, because this is going to give us a number of like 400. I don't know if writing that to that's actually going to work, but I guess we'll find out. I've never used the speakers before, so we're going to we're gonna figure it out as we go. Um, until then, there's one more thing we can do today, and that's to expand the power grid slightly. Oh, and go check on our potatoes. We should definitely do that. I'm about to die. By the way, if you've been watching the series and you aren't subscribed, I, I never ask for this. Please consider doing so. Um, I'm currently trying to work out if making this content is a viable sort of full-time gig for myself at the moment. And in order to come to that conclusion, I need data. And the data I need is your subscription, your likes, your comments. So please let me know if you are enjoying things, because I, I don't know unless someone tells me, right? So uh, please tell me <laughs> if you're enjoying the content. All right, let's do a quick old, the old switcheroo here. Oh, plant analyzer still. Look at that, dude. How's that for efficiency? Uh, probably don't use the drill on the potatoes just yet. Too much darkness. Need more light. Oh my god, we have rice. Dude. And we have potato seeds. Dude. And potato. Dude. Okay, well the potato seeds are immediately going to get replanted. That's amazing. Okay, we need to go cook this thing right now. We have three rice. Oh, dude. Okay, we're going to wait till we get seeds though. Uh, we definitely need seeds. Okay, we're going to eat this potato. You will eat the potato. But first we cook the potato. It's a much more efficient food source. Oh god, there's not much time. Okay, turn on the microwave. Place the potato. Close the microwave. Oh god. Run, run the microwave. Cook the potato, quickly. I have four seconds. Start. Start. Oh, it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. Eat it. Oh god, consume. Yes. Yes. Oh, he lives 80%. Okay, so one potato gives us 80. Oh, God, that's not much. <laughs> We're so dead, dude. All right, but we've staved off death for today. We've staved off death for today. All right, let's go take a look at our other plants. And uh, see how things are going over there. Okay, and our health is slowly coming back up. That's awesome. I'm not going to cook the other potato just yet. I think we might want to... Uh, this potato has somehow already received 122% of its daily light dose, which makes no sense to me. What's no, now it's 60%. What the hell? Oh, the light intensity was 122. I see. The rice is doing just fine. Seems like he's well satisfied across light and dark levels. The corn, same goes. Yeah, growth efficiency 97%, 98%, 96%. I guess you just have to keep both of those numbers over 100. Is that the idea? Um, because that's quite manual, if so. I'm sure there's a way to do this. I mean, they're all thriving right now, which is music to my ears. 
Okay, we're going to let the rice seed and then we will harvest and we shall have yummy, we'll have some yummy chow fan for dinner next time. Some veggie chow fan, how about that, huh? Alright, but last thing we do today is to push power a little bit further. I think I'm going to try and add on two more large wind turbines and we're going to call that a happy, a happy accident. And then we need to go do a lot of mining. What do we do with our potato as well? We need to put this in a place of honor. Um, where does one... Hmm, what does one even do with a potato? Place it next to the tin cans? Place it uh, ceremoniously in the center of the room? Wow. Have you ever seen anything so beautiful? Oh, will decay in six hours? Oh, no, not with my appetite, it won't. Uh, you are going to get put away, Mr. Electrum. Uh, let's go and see... Well, uh, we know we need more wind turbines, so let's have a quick look here. Five grams of Electrum, that's not much. Okay, cook me up. I want three more of these. And uh, for that, I'm going to need more steel frames. Uh, which I'm now realizing is going to be difficult, because the steel's being used here. Okay, we'll have to just wait. Honestly, we might as well just do four, right? Yeah. Like, the Electrum's finished anyway. We're gonna have to do a whole new smelt. We might as well just do a whole new smelt. I think that's the... I think that's the only way to do this safely. Now, if I remember correctly, we're gonna need, like, a million cable coil as well for this, so I can't actually do four because I don't have enough oh. copper. Uh, so we're gonna need some... Uh, well, first things first, we're gonna need the steel back. So we will do three after all. Steel's gonna go in here to make uh, iron... It's gonna make frames. Great. And then you're going to make cable coil, because I remember us needing, like, a lot of this. And I think we're probably just gonna make all of that copper into cable coil. Alright, I'm gonna sit here and uh, click left mouse button for the next five minutes. While I watch my precious food reserves dwindle once more. Uh, but there was a comment which uh, did mention that uh, we should be doing more sacrifices to the Eldritch Gods of Europa. And uh, I don't know how many dead me's you want to see on the floor before uh, your bloodthirst is sated, O Cthulhu. But uh, I'd say we're currently fast approaching the second virgin sacrifice. And these would be... Vir I mean, there's, there's no one else but me and um, some chickens. Uh, well, rather very, um, very expired chickens <laughs> to, to, uh, to possibly change the status of my, um, premarital affairs. So, uh, I, I do wonder if, uh, any sacrifice would ever be a non-virgin one. I don't think it would. A real gaming moment right there. Hopefully we have enough heavy cable coil as well to wire all this in. I think we should, if we're clever about how we place it. I think. I don't actually know how much of this I need, so I'm just going to take, like, 30. Also, I'm going to put on the pipe heater for a bit, uh, so that this is... That is not a potato, Gabe. Um, I promise. I keep forgetting my atmospherics thing back in the other room. Uh, yeah, might want to might wanna print out a spare, I think, at this point. Okay, 32 is perfect. Let's go. Uh, outside. Definitely put the helmet on, though, maybe. That's probably a good call. And I put down some more power, so that we don't have to keep burning coal. Because, yeah, we are, we are starting to bottom out again. We need another storm, man. So really, really top everything off here. It has been a long time since we last upgraded this, though, so I think this is overdue. Okay, uh, we're probably going to want the turbines to face this way. Um, so they can just wind up with that one. How far out do I need to build you for this to work and not look stupid? Probably there? Can I put this here? Oh, I can put this here. Oh, we're going to put this here then. And the power is going to go that way. Because that's where it fits. No, 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 I can go forward. I, I'm, I'm a sucker for... Uh, I'm a sucker for, for, for aesthetics. So it's going to go that way. Yeah, at least that way it's facing in the same direction, right? I think that makes sense. And you know what? You can just put them all out in the same direction. Nah, 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 there's no huge rush. Let's just do it like this. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's very interesting. I can't actually run it next to them because these things don't allow stuff to pass around the sides. Ooh, plot twist. Okay. 
So, could I go under them? I can go under them. Alright, that's how we do this then. But yeah, we're not going to have enough heavy cable, but maybe we can just get one of these things running for the meantime. Oh yeah, nowhere near enough. We're going to need like another 20 per? 15 per is what it looks like. Okay. Uh, but we can get the rest of the stuff welded in at the very least. And we need five. Oh, it's only five cable coil. I don't know why I thought it was so much more. And then I think it's a screwdriver to finish it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, nice. That's going to add a little bit of juice to the party. But not much. But not much. Okay, we might as well get everything welded up then. Um, since we're here anyway. Okay, that's the cables. And that's the screwdriver into each. Alright, we got to remember this stuff is not wired up yet. It's just sort of... Uh, it's just kind of hanging out near the, near the end result. So we, we can do this in the meantime. Bring this down a little. We only have to go one under. And I'll start that on this side as well. Which side do we want? I think we want them all on this end. I think that's the way I want to do this. Okay, cool. I need to go dig up a bunch of copper and gold. Um, but first we need to figure out if this character's going to make it through the night. I think we're going to have to burn some coal. Another time here. It's not, it's, I mean, it's not a problem. Like, it's not a bad thing to do it. It's just sort of not really, I, you know, it's not really how you want to be doing it. Okay, the te pressure, temperature in here is actually, oh my god, are you kidding me with this? You know what? Suck it all up. No, actually, I don't know what temperature that is. I should probably check that. I think it's like zero. It's around freezing. So let's just have a quick see here. Uh, let's go get our, uh, let's go get our... <laughs> Let's go get our atmospheric analyzer. We should probably leave that door closed now, for the most part. Currently sitting at negative 22. Ah, oh, we just missed the, the tipping point. Okay, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to burn a little bit more hydrogen in here. That should push the temperature up slightly, but not too much, I'm hoping. 34 degrees? Freaking open that sniz up right now. Vacuum it out. 35C gas, that's exactly where we want it. Oh, that's the dream. Okay, that was the way to do it. A little micro combustion there. Alright, and that's gonna be slowly sucked up by our filters. Oh, look at how fast the temperature drops. Eh? Just just uh, the volume of gas relative to the exposed length of pipe. That's insane. Alright, but it is fully vacuumed. Yay! Okay, cool. So, I guess we want to cook up another batch then, right? Let's get like another 10 and another 5. And that's just this is literally just like this is my combustion mix. This is the this is the burn it, leave it, flood it when it's time. Okay, nice. Pressure is at 6 megapascals, temperature is at several thousand. The valve is closed. Excellent. All right, next up. You're still running. How am I? Uh, my battery should be looking a hell of a lot better. Oh yeah, chuck a block. Let's. Uh, we can turn this off then for the moment. How much? No, no, stop you. How much coal was left? One. Oh, honestly, just just finish it off. It doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, hopefully the sun comes up soon because I want to go mining. I'm 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 feeling anxious here. We could start thinking about where we want to put the landing pad. I mean, out here would make the most sense, right? Like, out in this space? So I guess we could, uh... Does landing pad need a frame? I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna put these frames and sheets out here for safekeeping, then. And, uh, we're gonna go, go mining. Hydration critical. Oh, but first we're gonna get a drink. And my body is fully recovered from Kwashiorkor. That's fantastic. Okay, I have returned triumphant from a second mining trip. Uh, we have a pretty insane volume of, uh, of stuff available to us here. And that looks like some seeding rice to me too. Let's go ahead and switch on the lights over there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all awful. I know, I know. Um, we're going to turn this on. And I suppose we can... I actually got some lead and stuff, which would be really interesting to make some more solder with. And in fact, that's something I'm very interested in doing. I think that's just about the temperature, right? In fact, this might be at temperature for that. 
I think this is. Uh, let's quickly just get that in there then. That's just iron and, and lead, right? I believe so. Because there's no temperature, there's no pressure requirement for solder, it's just temperature? Oh wow, the pressure, the temperature went back up, interesting. I guess one of them gave off oxygen. Okay, but we'll tweak that in a second. Let's go uh, eat, drink, be merry, recharge our batteries, yada yada yada. Okay, how are you doing? You're not growing very well, but you've got enough got light now, which is good. You have seeds, excellente. We have rice seeds, and we can harvest rice. Okay, you are fruiting, you are fruiting. Are you fine? Light received, darkness received. Yeah, you're happy. You're happy, too. They're both growing really well. 98%, 102. I think we could probably turn the lights on again in here. Probably a bit too much darkness at the moment. Okay. That's the potato. I think I'm going to plant another potato in that space. I think we're going to go back for the sacred potato and plant that rather than the rice. And I'm going to work out how you cook rice in a microwave. Uh... Couldn't tell you. I assume it involves a water bottle? I guess we'll find out. Uh, but the rice seeds can get stowed. I do want to start planting like plants in the same things. Let's plant our other potato here. There will be at different growth stages because I didn't know what I was doing when I started this, but it will, I, I hope, eventually work its way itself out. And I guess I need to look up how to cook rice. I suppose we can do that with this, right? Rice. Uh, cooked rice. We make it in a microwave with three rice. Is that it? Really? Gives us nutrition 20. Well, that's not much. Basic packaging machine. Uh-huh. We can make... Can we make canned rice? We make canned rice pudding. What does that require? Empty can and five cooked rice. I see. We're gonna get one cooked rice, right? We need to grow like a lot of rice at the same time. I have a feeling we probably want to keep the rice though. Hey look, the potato's gone up to the next level. Nice. I think I'm finally getting the hand of this. That will produce cooked rice. I mean, I'm part of me thinking like maybe we should just not cook the rice, but... I guess we're just gonna eat this. Cannot eat the rice. Oh shit. Okay. We should have planted the rice. I did not know that. That's on me. That's just what it is, I guess. Alright. Uh, oh, hold on, hold on. Wait, what am I doing? My helmet's closed. There we go. It only gives 40%. Okay, that's not worth it. That's not worth it. Alright, cool. So, if we want to do rice, we got to do, like, a lot of rice at the same time. Good to know. Also, we need to bring a... F I think we're going to make another portable filter and just stick it in there. It's simpler than cycling the atmosphere. And we'll just keep... Yeah, I think that's going to be a lot simpler than cycling the atmosphere. We'll just do a portable filter with a battery charger. Same way we've been doing it with the other one to deal with pollutants and carbon dioxide. We'll do it for oxygen, nitrogen, and volatiles in that room. Okay. And let's do our smelt. How are we doing here? And I've got the wrong chip. I'll be right back. Okay, it's still too hot in here. 350 to 550. But if I remember correctly, solder doesn't have a... Like a... Uh, pressure limit? So why don't we just cool it down by throwing some ice in there? Oh, because it's got nitrous! Oh, I'm an idiot! I forgot! <laughs> I completely forgot that NOS is an oxidizer now. Oh, whoopsie. That's gonna burn real hot. Oh, so you can use nitrites instead of oxides. That's interesting. Okay, that's I mean, it's good to know, but it's... I'm, I'm, I'm stupid. Whoops. That's a big goof. Okay, well, that's extra spicy now. Um... All right, we're not gonna get the uh, we're not gonna get the solder right now. So what we'll do is we'll take the reagent mix and we'll just stick it over there, um, and then we will we will pull out what we want when it's time. Uh, we could we we'll do we can just throw that back in. It'll become solder when the conditions are met. For now, I'm just gonna do my normal smelts because I want to finish off the power so we can wrap up this episode. Yo, that's a hot burn. Dude, step aside. Oxides. We need to start using some nitrice in this, man. Okay, 140 gold. I also let's cycle this airlock. So bright. Oh my god. Um, 
Then we're going to want to do the silicon, I think. Should have added the water ice to cool it down. Hunger Next time. Don't hunger caution me. I just fed you. Okay? I will send you right back to bed with no supper, young man. Okay, cool. We got we got some more iron, copper, gold, and silicon. And by some, I mean like a lot more. I'm pretty happy with that. We already had lots of iron to begin with, so that's good. Okay, and you are now cooling down, right? Yeah, let's throw the water ice in there and see what happens. Will that cool it down a little bit? It did. Not as much as I would have liked. I think we're just gonna have to let that let that chill for a moment. Uh, just throw in this to uh, to cool it down even further. Did it took off like one degree C because lead does nothing. Okay, cool. Never mind. Um, and then I think what we do is we just put this reagent mix back in. And then when it's solder time, that can pop out. Nice. Okay, and that button will go green when it's time. And then we'll know. Alright, let's go finish off these cables and uh, go to bed. Okay, and with this last little bit of cable, we're going to have plugged in our three brand new wind turbines. And that's going to, well, not quite, I wouldn't say it's going to double our output. It's going to double our output from these turbines at the very least. I didn't bring my network analyzer with me because I'm a fool. But uh, we can take a cool look at them at least, and uh, appreciate how majestic they are. They produce quite a bit of juice. Uh, we are going to need more of them, though, for sure. But that's a problem for future miles. For right now, we're going to be focused, and I think by right now, I mean, like, for the foreseeable future, we're really going to be focused more on uh, hydroponics and maybe trading as well. I do want to try my hand at trading, but like I said, I've never interacted with the new mechanics, so I have absolutely no idea um, what to expect there. So if you know, let me know. Uh, what your what your ideal trading setup is and uh, as always guys i've been having a great one with this but i will be seeing you in the next one cheers and of course a huge thank you to our channel members and patrons for this month couch potato the senate kelly ananas call me bow 82 riley david lcg canyon sahar knee cruncher old man tater frickin friendly beaver not k arthur cut beef go ham jack smallman rivo adachi I'm Alpha, King, Alan Osella Chair, Sella Hair, Gragnar Skull Crew, Raija, Rob, Depoyo44, Pratham Perush, Sleep Deprived Sam, Badass Beast, Charlie Weber, Mermix, Mel Romans, Officer C4, Ooh, Jan the Pan, Cairo, Kili Thaza, Eve Roxanne, Kodiak, Dimitri Liako, CCMD, Wedgie FRG, Lunar Shots, Darky, Hedrick Ebert, Black Omega 9, The Emperor, Dennis Feros, Big Bird 18th, Josh Thompson, Chad Farista, Mermix 42 and Millennium Dawn. You guys all rock.